As I was creating this model, which is really just a transect created from some contour data that I was playing around with in AutoCAD, I came across a process that I think is much more efficient for creating presentation quality modeled contour data. And I think it works better than using the Simplify Contour plugin. It works better to apply from contour. And I've searched high and low for a plugin via the extension warehouse. I've looked on smuster.com. I've looked through Sketchucation. I found a couple that have gotten close, but are not quite there. So if something exists, prove me wrong and let me know. But I don't think there is. And also, any programmers, if you happen to see this, maybe you could craft a script that would do what I'm about to show you. So I am in AutoCAD via Parallels on my Mac. And I've got some contour data that is pretty raw. It's direct from some files created from a civil engineer. And everything exists in the proper elevation, which is convenient. And I'm going to go ahead and right block this out. And we'll call this, how about original contours. Jump back to SketchUp. I'll do a new file and then I will import that file, which is right here, which is a, not a very uncommon workflow at all. People do this all the time, but here's one of a few problems. Let me select those. Problem number one, a lot of edges, and that's actually not too bad, but if you've worked with contours, you've probably seen that number much, much larger. And you might say, yeah, well, you can just simplify contours. There's a couple of problems with this. I'll just use the default settings. Yes, that, that does make it a much smaller file, but in my experience, it creates a lot of overlapping contours. In this example, I've got a very small set, so I got kind of lucky, but you can see they're starting to get close. If I used a degree higher than 10, you'd probably start seeing some overlapping contours pretty quickly. So there's always this quality control factor. And again, more times than not, it seems to create overlapping contours when you have a larger set. All right, so now I could take this and do the from contour. And again, I'm just showing you what I think is one way to do it, but not a very optimal way compared to the process I'll be showing you in a moment. All right, that is complete. Let me turn on my hidden geometry so we can take a look. And it creates a very irregular triangulation, which for effect, you know, it's not the end of the world, but here's the other problem. It, it creates this snow drifting. And I don't know if it's just me and the contours I work with, but I always get to this problem and it doesn't look terrible. And I realize you're probably going to be doing this more for presentation than anything else. You're not going to be doing a, a drainage plan or, or actual construction documents for grading. Well, maybe you are, I don't know, but I don't do that stuff. And it kind of has this weird folded crumpled paper effect. Let me go back to AutoCAD. Here's the process that I think works much better. And I found a Lisp from this site, polyface.de. And man, oh man, did I have to dig to find this, but it is really cool. You can download this zipped package here. And if you're not familiar with AutoCAD, a Lisp is kind of like a Ruby script and you can load them as needed. So I could load it up and the next time I run AutoCAD, I'd probably need to load it again. You can put these in a special directory where they always load, but I don't do that. Once you've downloaded and extract, extracted those files, or for any Lisp, you want to use the command app load in AutoCAD and navigate to that directory, hit load. The first time you do this, you'll probably see a warning about something accessing files or whatnot. Probably okay to hit okay. Once that is loaded, you can start typing polyfit and you'll see you'll have a new command. Now what this command does is allow you to set the polylines. Also, I've, I've joined all these polylines. I should have mentioned that earlier, but each one of these visual lines is in fact one joined polyline. As I'm running this tool, I've got two options, number and length, and it defaults to number equals 10, which would turn each one of these into 10 segments, which is kind of like the divide 
functionality in SketchUp. But if you hit L and enter, you can give it a length of a curve. Now it's set to 15. I'll go ahead and type 20, hit enter. And I was in layer zero, so that's where it's wanting to put this finished result. If I zoom in here, I can preview the existing and the generated one. So do I want to delete the source objects? You know what, I'll say no because I've got them in their own layer. And let's turn that one off. So here are my optimized contours. And there is the risk of ending up with overlapping contours using this process, but I see it much less than using the Simplify Contours in SketchUp. Also, a couple of these contours got minimized to just one line, but that's actually okay. And then that even works better when you use the From Contours because you don't end up with that plateau effect. If I go to a side view here, I can see that that is still in the correct elevation. So backing up top view, let's do another right block. And I'll select these, call this one, how about seg contours. Back to SketchUp, I will import that one. And I'm going to move it over here. And while I'm here, I'm going to make another copy and move it over here and make that unique. So right away, I'm down to 733 edges. So right out of the box, it's a much smaller edge count. And you know what, let's go ahead and do the From Contours tool. There we go, let's compare these with the hidden geometry turned on. You can see that the triangulation is much more regular and that results in a smoother looking model for one and you don't have that snow drifting effect because I'm not a programmer but I'm guessing the algorithm up here has to do a lot of factoring of which points can and cannot be connected to and from. So again up here on the original even running the simplified contour, you get the drifting, you get the crumpled vapor effect. Here, not so much. Ooh, look at that, maybe there's a little drifting, so maybe I'm wrong, but it's not as bad. Let's call it that. Okay, but here's the other kind of neat thing about this is, you know what, I'm gonna make one more copy. Let's also make that unique. Because you can double these up. The Simplify Contour plugin seems to work better on the segmented contours than it does those raw imported ones. So I'll keep it also at 10. I'll go to a top down view. And ew, again, we're getting kind of close here. So maybe 10 was a bit much. I don't see any over. Oh, there we go. There's a problem. So let's undo that a couple times. Undo, I'm going to go back to Simplify Contours. You know what, I'm gonna do five, just to be safe. There we go, so what were we at, 700 before? Now we're down to 492, over a tenth less than the original. And this one, from Contours, once again. It is complete, I'll turn on Hidden Geometry. So I can see the triangulation is not quite as regular, but it's still not very bad. It just looks like it took out every other contour. But again, it doesn't really work that well unless you've got them properly segmented. Now the reason I made this third one is I do know there are a few tools out there. There's this excellent Bezier curve where you can do a polyline divider, which kind of does the same thing. So I could say make that, you know, every 30 feet, but that doesn't work on multiple lines. So that would be cool if it did, but it doesn't. So in the past, I've had to do this for each individual one, much easier in AutoCAD using that poly face. So anyway, that's all I wanted to show you. If you've got AutoCAD poly face, it's a free Lisp. I think it would save you some headache in creating topography from contours. And if you're a programmer, or if you just happen to know of a Ruby script that does this, please let me know. I would be happy to find it, but again, I've not had luck. 
I just remembered something else I wanted to show, and it has to do with using another plugin called Cleanup that works really well as a, a final polishing step, also for contours. A great plugin you can access from the extension warehouse in SketchUp. And I'm going to edit this drawing right here, which I believe was the second one that I created. Now, I think you have to have hidden geometry turned on. I'm not quite sure. I turn it on just in case. And when I run the cleanup plugin, one of the options here is to merge coplanar faces. So areas like this up here, which is probably some kind of water body, can be merged and it will just visually represent better. So let's hit cleanup, go ahead and run that. I have tried using a couple of the delete coplanar edges plugins, but it seems like when you work with large sets of data like this, it tends to get confused at times. So that one looks all right. Now, there are a couple of things I need to edit yet further. Let me make a copy over here to better illustrate this with my hidden geometries turned off. And let's get rid of the contours as well. There we go. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. Contours are gone. So that water doesn't really show up very well because it's smoothing an edge that in reality is harder visually. So how do I fix that? Well, I'll turn on hidden geometries, double click on this surface, and a couple steps you got to do. One is to hide it and then to unhide it because that is only the way to unhide all the way around. And then open the soften smooth edges dialog, turn both of these off and just, you might need to drag it to the right and then back to the left. And that returns that nice hard edge so if I close, close this, exit out of that component, edit, turn off my hidden geometry. There we go. Looks much better. And we could slap some water on it. Boom. Whoops. Not that one. There we go. And call it a day. There you go. If you have any questions, please find me and ask me.